change. So I wanted just to start with COVID and, and really just wondering about what you think has been different about government's response across the world to the pandemic uh, because of Nudge uh, than might have been the case had Nudge not been written. So what have we seen in terms of intelligent uses of Nudge insights uh, across the world? Um, or perhaps you've been frustrated and you think that uh, people should have picked up the book more eagerly uh, and learned more effectively from what you've been writing over the last couple of decades. Well, I, I think that there was certainly a lot of nudging going on and not just by the government. Uh, think about uh, just in, in the private sector, if you would go out to a shop, um, smaller shops were, there were rules about how many people could be inside at one time. But most shop owners took a very bit of simple technology. They would take a piece of blue tape and put it on the ground two meters apart. And that, you didn't have to have a sign. Everybody knew, okay, that's the nudge to be socially distant. And one thing I think hasn't been commented on is behavior led government. So if you look at restaurant reservations and travel reservations, they had plummeted by the middle of March and no government had really done anything at that point. Now, some governments have been more successful than others uh, and, and, but, you know, I think some of that has been wisdom. Some of that has been luck. Uh, we've all been, blessed by the miracle of the vaccines. And certainly Cass and I can't take any credit for that. Um, I think the rollout of the vaccines has varied and at least in the US, in the initial period, there was quite a bit of sludge and there was a sort of a policy choice how much are you going to try to direct who goes first versus get as many shots in arms as fast as possible? And I, I'm not saying I know what the right answer to that is, but there was a lot of sludge and the sludge often acts in a way that benefits the educated and the wealthy because they're just, better at working the system. So I, I spent much of the early part of the pandemic in Berkeley and the neighborhood I was in had lots of educated people and there were emails flying around. Oh, they have shots over here. They have shots over there. Uh, people who were less connected uh, weren't as benefiting from that. So make it easy. You know, my mantra, that was the key to stage one. Even more important in stage two, which was getting the people who weren't clamoring for the shot, make it as easy as possible for them. Often that meant going to where they are, especially in rural areas, and having no appointments. You know, eventually you could walk into any drugstore and, and get a shot. That was very important. We're now in the United States getting to the third stage or are well into the third stage where we're dealing with people who have very strong opinions that they should not get a vaccine. Uh, I'm not sure what those things are based on, but um, as I've written about recently, I think we are past the point of nudging when it comes to the vaccine. And the, the reason for that is uh, vaccinations, it, this is a simple case of an externality. If you're 
unvaccinated, you can make me sick. Well, probably not from Sydney, but you, you can make your students and colleagues sick and you, you don't have the right to make me sick. So I don't know what Sydney is doing. The University of Chicago has decided if you want to come back to school in the fall, you have to be vaccinated. If you're a student, you have to be vaccinated. If you're a faculty member, that's not a nudge. That's a mandate. Now, as far as I know, no government has taken that step. But we're now seeing mandates of various sorts by employers, by universities, by uh, sporting events and concerts. There was a huge outdoor rock concert in Chicago a few weeks ago called Lollapalooza. You had to be vaccinated if you wanted to attend. And it seems like that was pretty effective in preventing a big spreader of it.